Hey kids, sick of me yet? It's time to talk about the homework assignment. And this is going to be your homework assignment actually for the rest of the semester, but I'm going to give you reminders each week. You're going to start animating your final project. I know we still have a couple class assignments left. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Don't worry. There are certain things that you can get started on now, even though we still have our effects assignment and dialogue assignment to do you can still get started on your homework assignment now. And what you can do is, what I would do, is pick a part of your final project, look at your storyboard cards, look at your animatic, which part was the most fun or the easiest to, what, what do you think will be the easiest to animate and or the most fun. And then for this week, animate 35 to 50 drawings. Now, that sounds like a lot. If you split it up over the week though, it's really not that much. And sometimes when you're animating, you'll just get into it and you'll realize, oh my gosh, I've been animating for four or five hours and I've done all these drawings. And that's great, especially on Thursdays when you've done your class assignment and you still have some time left for class, you know, that four hours, you can use that time to start working on your homework, your final project. And then, of course, the rest of the semester, once your assignment class assignments are done, you're just going to be animating, 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 assembling, assembling, assembling. So let's talk about assembling, because some, many of you have had a great success with assembling your animation and turning in GIFs or dot .movies, MOVs, or whatever, MP4s. You, you know the file extensions for the most part. And we're not going to go too much into that. Um, whatever uh, app you're using to assemble your animation, that's great. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about aspect ratio. What is aspect ratio? Well, it's one of your words, so you can learn everything you want to learn about aspect ratio in the WordPress below. However, or above, wherever it shows up in the scheme of things. However, the most important aspect ratios to think about and to really understand are called 4-3 and 16-9. And there are other ways to write that as well, but we're going to keep it simple and just talk about the 4-3 and 16-9. And of course it's going to show up over here more clearly so you can look at it. And I'll also have it on the WordPress so you can really look at it, each of these cards and study it. So here, aspect ratio is just how much across by how much down. So our old TVs, the really old kind of style TVs that were like CRT or cathode ray tube TVs and they were kind of rounded and people had to be careful about what uh, showed up on the edges because it would get cut off because of the shape of the, of the TV. That was 4.3 and that was the standard for a really long time. But now most of us have big flat screen TVs, or even your screen on your laptop, is going to be roughly 16.9. And that's how it looks compared to the 4.3. And the way you can understand this uh, the most easily is if you had an old TV and you watched a movie that was projected in a movie theater, a, a more recent movie, it would, it would look like this. It would have to be letterboxed in order for the whole movie to fit in an old style TV. So this is, a, this is how it looked if you had a movie that was kind of a newer movie on an old style TV. You would get letterbox. And that's when there was a black bar along the bottom and a black bar along the top. Now even with today's modern TVs, you can still have some letterboxing depending on what the format was of the original theatrical release. You know, IMAX has a different aspect ratio and uh, there's just so many different kinds. But the most standard one, the ones that are the flat screen TV or your laptop, is usually 16.9. So that's how it would look. And then, of course, now, if you have a more modern TV that is 16.9, but you play a movie that was shot in the 30s or 40s when the aspect ratio was 4.3, or an old TV show, like if you look on Netflix, um, I think if you watch... Um, like the Andy Griffith show or just some of the old shows from the 50s and 60s, you'll see columns on the side, on the sides because it didn't, doesn't fit the whole 16.9. And if they stretched it out to fit the 16.9, you would miss some of the top and bottom. 
conversely, if you if you uh, try to make a widescreen completely fit an old style TV, not a widescreen, but a wide format film fit an old TV, they used to have to do something called pan and scan, which was horrible. And what they would do is they would show part of the film this way and then slowly move it this way, and it was really nauseating and awful. And you couldn't see the original framing that the director had for really amazing films. So it's much better that we have this 16.9 and that the smaller, older films fit in with columns. Okay, so that's aspect ratio. And so whenever we talk about aspect ratio now, you'll know exactly what I mean. Which brings us to the way to shoot your animation. Now this is not just for your class assignments, but most assuredly for your final project, which is your homework for the next, whatever, seven weeks. All right. So here's my little chart, and of course you can see it up close over here, or you can look at it more carefully in the WordPress, because I'm going to have all of these in the WordPress for you. This is going to be about camera orientation and your drawing orientation. We're going to talk about the drawing orientation first, because remember in the class assignment video today, I showed you ways that you could cut your paper and how you should draw on your paper. So this is a representation of any of those size sheets of paper, but on the horizontal. Now what do I mean by that? I mean the long side goes across, and then this is the short side. So this is the way you should be doing your drawings on your paper. It should be horizontal. Because if you do it on the vertical, if you turn it around, and some of you have done this for some of your assignments, you're not in trouble, you didn't get counted down for it, don't worry about it. But what you're going to want to do for your final project for sure is animate on the horizontal, not on the vertical. Because then what happens when you shoot it is you get these columns on the side. And you don't want that for your final project. You want your gorgeous animation to fill the screen. So that's number one. Then you have your camera orientation. So here is my little desk and I'm doing my drawing and I'm doing it correctly because my paper is going across. It's on the horizontal and I've got up here my little animation for dummies book because that's how I learned how to animate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't even know if they have that book, but I thought it would be funny. All right. So here's my little setup. Some of you sometimes show me too much of your desk when you're an, when you're taking the pictures of your animation. So this is what I want you to try to start doing from now on. You're not in trouble for having done it in the past, so please don't worry. You don't have to reshoot anything. This is for your final project. You want your phone to be oriented in the horizontal. Okay? So that when you take a picture of your animation, you can almost fill the screen with just your animation. This is the wrong way to do it. It's interesting and it's cool to see other things in the in the view that show that it's, oh, this is a piece of paper and I've drawn on it. And that's fine if that's going to be your final project if you want to incorporate the background. You don't have to do that. That would be interesting. But if you are going to incorporate background because you think it would be cool, I still want the camera to be on the horizontal. Okay, so have it lengthways like that, not upright like this, either way. So either try to fill the screen with your drawing, or like I said, if you want to have something surrounding your drawing to show that you've worked on it on your desk or whatever, you can do that, but then you're going to have to be really careful to make sure that the animation lines up. Animation can be very forgiving if the paper moves a little bit. We've talked about this before. But you don't want to, for your final project, you want it to look as good as possible. So make sure it's on the horizontal. All right. Now, finally, timing. Some of you had a, had a little issue with, um, I think it was iMotion. I can't remember which app for the phone that puts together your animation. It may be a problem with all of them. So um, the issue was that when you shoot your animation, like when you were working on your animatics, each drawing was the same length of time. There was no way to adjust one drawing for a length of time, another drawing for a length of time. So something you can do to avoid that. Now wait, let me just say, if you have Premiere or Final Cut Pro, then you can do your timing any way you want because you have a timeline and each image is going to be dropped in and that's great. 
if you know how to do that, if you have access to those um, applications or software, that's great. Go for it. But if you're using one of the apps, the animation apps for your phone, then you are going to have to think about the timing of your final project. So what am I talking about? Well, here's my little chart. Again, it's up here bigger and it will be also be in the WordPress. But let's say the normal way, without timing, this is how some of you found your animatics to be and why you wanted to give me a sheet with the real timing so I could put it together more properly the way you wanted to see it. If you do this, you have drawing 1, drawing 2, drawing 3, drawing 4, drawing 5, all the way down to drawing 12, for example. This is one second. And each one is the same length. So if your first drawing if you wanted it to stay on longer because it was the exposition or or an establishing shot, what you were what you're going to need to do is shoot it multiple times for however long you want it to appear on the screen. So if you want it to be, for instance, an entire second, you would have to shoot it 12 times or 24 depending on your app. So here's an example of of shooting with timing or taking to account that all the images are an even amount of time. So let's say I take the same 12 drawings. For the first drawing, I want it to go normally, second drawing normally, but for the third drawing, I want it to stay on for like the length of time that three drawings would stay on. So what I'll have to do is instead of just shooting it once, I'll have to shoot it three times in a row. So that will lengthen how long that image stays on. Three is an arbitrary number. You can do whatever timing you need to in order to make your project look good. Another thing you can do is, let's say you have a cycle. Maybe you're using one of your amazing walk cycles or, or even a bouncing ball cycle or whatever you have in your final project. If you have a cycle, what you're going to have to do is, let's say you have a three drawing cycle. It could be eight drawings, it could be 12, it could be 32. I did a 32 drawing cycle once, it was intense. But what you can do is, let's say, for example, it's a three drawing cycle. After you've done, for instance, your, your hold, you can shoot drawing number four, shoot five, shoot six, and then shoot four, five, six. And you can do that as many times as you need that cycle to happen. All right? And then you can just continue from there. So if you have cycles, you're, you're going to have to reshoot the cycles. And having an X sheet, having it planned out, will help you remember, oh, okay, drawings 15 through 27 is a cycle, and I want it to go on three or four times. Then you can write in your little X sheet, and there's a sample X sheet that you can use in the WordPress if you can print it out, or you can just make your own. Because basically all you need to know is how long a drawing has to stay on the screen, or how long your cycle is or how many times you want to repeat the cycle. So then if you do that, you can write, write it down and keep track and know, okay, I cycled this three or four times, that'll probably look good, and then you can test it out when you're doing your weekly homework assignment, which is working on your final project. So that's what you should be doing for your homework. It's not just the animation. You should also do some tests and shoot your 35 to 50 drawings per week and test out how you can do the timing and make it look really the way you want it to look. All right, so homework assignment due next Wednesday night, anytime in the night. And in fact, as long as I get it by Thursday morning, that's great and you won't be considered late. I want to mention in the Canvas, if you're using Canvas and uploading to Canvas, that's great. If it says it's missing, it's not really. It means, and I'm trying to remember to put in the comments that you sent it to me through email. This is not going to affect your grade. I don't need to use Canvas to actually create your grades. I'm keeping track myself of who's turning in what and when and how well and all of that good stuff. So don't worry about that. If it says it's missing and I put in it that you still had it complete, but that if you sent it through email, that's all you need to worry about. Now, if it's late because I gave you until noon or until midnight and you turned it in Wednesday night at two in the morning or whatever, don't worry about that either. It would have to be many days or a week late 
for it to count against you or for you not to get as much credit. And I'm going to try to be as helpful and nice about this as possible. But you do have to turn your assignments in eventually. Don't get caught waiting too long and not having enough time to work on your final project because you really need to be doing to get that A and to really get some great animation done you're really going to need to do about 35 to 50 drawings per week so that you can get what you want out of this class. Now, does it have to be limited to 50? No. If you can do 100 drawings a week, as long as you can figure out how to shoot it and put it all together and make your film, I have no problem with that. Go for it. But you don't have to do that. You're not going to get an A++. You can only get an A or a B or a C. I don't give out D's, so don't even try to get a D, all right? So, homework assignment, work on your final project. If you're worried about what part to start with first, work on something that you'll enjoy or something that seems easy to get yourself in the groove. And then starting the week after, every homework assignment is going to continue to be 35 to 50 drawings. Now, turning it in, we're going to, I'm going to think about that one. You might have to shoot it to turn, in order to turn it in and have it be official so that I know you really did those drawings, but you don't have to worry as much about the timing unless you want to get the timing exactly right and so that you can assemble all of the final pieces eventually. Now, some of you might not be able to do that. I don't know how iMotion works, but let's say each week you do 50 drawings and each week you shoot it exactly the way you want it with the right timing because you used your little X sheet, etc. And then you end up with all of these dot MOVs or, you know, QuickTimes or MP4s or whatever final format you have. What you can do is send all of those to me in the correct order because you may animate out of order. You might decide to do one part of your storyboard this week and another part of your storyboard the next week, whatever. Once you have all of those quick times done, if you don't have any other way to assemble them, just like with some of you in the animatics, you can tell me which quick time comes first and I can assemble it for you so that you have the final project product. All right. And finally, sound. This is the last part. Usually sound is required for your final project, but it's going to be really difficult for some of you to be able to do that given our situation. So it's not going to be required this time. And some of you have already figured out how to put music and sound effects and whatnot to your animation. So I'm not even going to worry about you. But if you're interested in doing that and you think you might want to be able to assemble sound, there are a couple of things you can do. I'm going to have, uh, when we do the dialogue class assignment, I'll have ways that you can get free sound, free sound effects, and whatever you might need, or music, and different things to add to your animation if you want. You don't have to do it. But if you want, you'll be able to do that. And then finally, the w best way, if you have dialogue or you want original sound or you have maybe your siblings or your parents or whoever you're living with are great voice actors and you want to use them in your film or you're a voice actor yourself, you can always videotape yourself with doing the sound. And then if you have Premiere or Final Cut Pro, you can uncouple the video from the audio and then use the audio with your animation, if you know how to do that. It is not required, like I said. Normally we would have our little sound studio and I could help you with that and we could work on the sound together, but we're not going to be able to do that. So, sound is not a requirement. But if you can figure out a way to add sound effects or audio, you know, dialogue or music or whatever you want, go for it. But it is not a requirement. Again, I want to see good movement. Good luck on your homework assignment.